Hey, Faith World, thank you so much for tuning in to The Voice of Faith. As you hear this message, we want to build up your faith and build up your hope in the Word of God. Check out this message from Marquise. Good evening, everyone. It's so good to be with you once again. I know I say it all the time when I'm on here, but it, it, it's really true. I always just get a kick and it's always a pleasure and a privilege to share the word of the Lord with you and just to share with you what God has put on my heart. Uh, I believe the last time I was with you, uh, we talked about trusting God in turbulent times. And I think there's a little bit more that we can extract from this encouraging and faith building text. The last time we were together, we described turbulence as uh, events or atmosphere, atmospheres rather, filled with turmoil, instability, conflict, upheaval, or sudden violent erratic motion. And we use the airplane as an example. But we can even add to this list sudden and unannounced transition. Uh, this year started off a little rough for, for me. Uh, January, my mom, um, as many of you may know, uh, went home to be with the Lord. And when I tell you that was some transition, um, and truth be told, transition can be very unnerving, especially if you're not all the way sure of what could be ahead. But I have found even in my life that the key to courageously facing the future, especially after a transition like that, I mean the matriarch of our family, um, but the key to courageously facing what's ahead is our confidence in the Lord. And one of the ways that my confidence was reinforced was by really leaning heavily on Psalm 46. And as I began reading, I found words and phrases that affirmed God's protection, that affirmed his provision, and that affirmed his steadfastness and his care. I'm going to read that passage again in the passage, the Passion Translation. And afterwards, I'm going to point out some truths and promises that really, really helped me during my time of transition. And maybe it'll help you as well. So uh, Psalms 46, it says, God, you're such a safe and powerful place to find refuge. You are a proven help in the time of trouble, more than enough and always available whenever I need you. So we will never fear. Even if every structure of support were to crumble away, we will not fear when the earth quakes and shakes, moving mountains and casting them into the sea. Verse three says, for the raging war of stormy winds and crashing waves cannot erode our faith in you. God has a constantly flowing river whose sparkling streams bring joy and delight to his people. His rivers flow through the city of the most high of God, the most high rather into his dwelling places. Verse five says God is in the midst of his city, secure and never shaken at daybreak. His help will be seen with the appearance of the dawn. Verse six says when the nations are in an uproar with their tottering kingdoms, God simply raises his voice and the earth begins to disintegrate before him. Verse seven says, here he comes. The commander, the mighty Lord of angel armies is on our side. The God of Jacob fights for us. Verse eight and nine says, everyone look, come and see the breathtaking wonders of our God. For he brings both ruin and revival. He's the one who makes conflicts end throughout the earth, breaking and burning every weapon of war. Verse 10 says, surrender your anxiety. I'm going to say that again. Surrender your anxiety. Be still and realize that I am God. I am the God above all nations and I am exalted through the whole earth. The last verse says, here he stands. The commander, the mighty Lord of angel armies is on our side. The God of Jacob fights for us. So if we were to condense this chapter, what truths can we take away? Well, this is what we can take away. In turbulent times, verse one lets us know that we have a refuge. You need to say that to yourself. I have a refuge. What is a refuge? A refuge is a safe place. It's a shelter from pursuit or danger or, or a safe place from trouble. In God, in his word, we have 
refuge. Verse three lets us know that we have a reservoir of faith. Verse three tells us, it says, for the raging war of stormy winds and crashing waves cannot erode our faith in you. What this verse is saying is that no matter what comes your way, no matter what challenges and circumstances may crash up against your life by the violent waves, it cannot erode our faith in you. Why? Because we have a reservoir. What is a reservoir? It is a supply. It is a bank or a storage that keeps you from being depleted. Hence the purpose of the voice of faith. I mean, if you go to the beach and you see some of these cliffs and stones, you see some of them seem like they've disintegrated over time. Well, that's true. Over a period of time, the winds and the waves and the salt and the sand causes that particular geographical location to slowly but surely erode away. And if we're not careful, if we don't stay plugged in into the word of God, it's so easy for our faith to erode. But when you have a reservoir, when you have a supply of the spirit, no matter what comes your way, your faith remains intact. So we have a refuge and we have a reservoir. But in verse four, not only do we have a refuge and reservoir, but we have a river. We have a river. What does a river represent? It represents in scripture, a place of gathering, a place of assembling, The river means joy. A river can denote prosperity and delight. Listen, I have found this to be true, that when trouble comes, run to the river. Listen, when you go to uh, some of the safari parks or even watch it on television, I've noticed that some of the prey, when they want to find refuge and the animals or the, the predators are chasing them, a lot of them, their lives have been spared by running into the river. I guess cats and felines don't like the water that much. And so my advice to you is when you find that trouble is coming your way, run to the river. And even on top of that, not only run to it, but find yourself planted there. Psalm 1 gives us that those who delight themselves in the law of God or the word of God, the Bible says that he or she will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water whose leaves will not wither or fade. In his word, we have refuge, we have a reservoir, we have a river. But not only that, verse 89 lets us know that God will bring ruin and revival. Ruin and revival. You might ask, How is this even possible? How can ruin and revival be in the same sentence? But the promise here in his word is that God is known for bringing ruin to your enemies and revival to his people. Yes, I said it. God is a God who will bring plunder and ruin to everything that opposes you and he will revive you. Last but certainly not least, verse 10 tells us as I read it here I love the way the passion translation puts it he just tells us to surrender your anxiety many of us are holding on to it and we've got a bulldog grip but this passage passage tells us to let it go surrender your anxiety be still and know that I am God in other words just relax the fruit of being still is revelation It is in the stillness that the knowing comes, that we know that he is God, that we know that we have the victory, that we know that he's in control, that we know that he's given us authority. It's in that still place that we find that revelation. And last but not least, verse 11, verse 11 actually echoes uh, verse seven. So he really wants us to get this. It says here he stands, the commander, the mighty Lord of angel armies is on our side. Listen, in turbulent times, the main thing you need to know is that the Lord of angel armies is on our side. What does that tell you? That victory belongs to us regardless of what's going on. Listen, I hope you were encouraged by this word. This is the voice of faith. And I just want to let you know that we have a trustworthy God in turbulent times. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of The Voice of Faith. We believe that God is going to do some amazing things in your life. And before you go, we always want to give you an opportunity to give so that you can be blessed. The different ways that you can give are on the screen. Also, if you need prayer, we would love to pray with you. Just email, message, or call the church. Thank you so much for watching today and have a blessed week.